Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Uh, I'm gonna braise some chicken in salsa verde with white beans. So we're gonna use, I think I've probably showed you this technique before, but we're using this technique where we braise chicken and then finish it in a sauce, but finish it in such a way that the skin stays crispy. So we need to start by crisping up the skin. So I've got my, I've got chicken legs here. These are thighs and drumsticks, but you could use any kind of dark meat. So you could use um, just thighs or just drumsticks. Um, you do want bone on and skin on though, bone and skin on um, the skin because that's the whole point of raising it with crispy skin uh, and uh, you, the bones to uh, help it retain some moisture. It cooks a little more slowly. You get a little more connective tissue in there and it stays moister as it cooks. All right, so I've got a oven safe pan here. Just a little bit of oil, enough to coat the bottom. And then we're gonna preheat it over pretty high heat. Um, now my this burner that I have here is higher than most home burners, a little bit higher than most home burners. I think it's 18,000 18, BTU, whereas most home burners are around, I don't know, like in my old kitchen, I think it was around 13 or 14,000. Um, so I'm gonna preheat it on high just until that oil starts shimmering a little bit. Uh, but then I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. If you have a sort of weaker home burner, you can leave it on high the whole time. Um, or just, you know, just keep an eye on it as, as it goes so that the chicken doesn't burn. All right, so that oil is starting to shimmer. We don't want it like smoking hot or anything. Shimmering is like around, when it hits around 375 degrees or so. You wanna hear that sizzle as the chicken goes in. And that's what tells you that it's cooking immediately uh, and that's gonna help ensure that it doesn't stick later on because you don't want that skin all coming off. All right, then we're gonna leave this pan here because that chicken will go back in it eventually. And meanwhile, while that chicken cooks, moderate heat. I'm gonna start peeling these tomatillos. So tomatillos are, you know, they're nightshade vegetables like veg like uh, tomatoes and like eggplants and like potatoes and all these other nightshades. Um, but they have these husks around them and a kind of sticky layer inside. A lot of people tell you you have to white wash off that sticky layer. Um, I never bother and I don't really notice that it makes any difference. Uh, so. I just don't do it because I find it, you know, why do something that you don't have to do? All right, I won't make you watch me peel all these tomatoes, but uh, so I'll skip to when they're basically done. You ready? All right, pretty much done here. So now I'm just gonna split these tomatillos in half. Get them onto the sheet tray. If you've seen my Salsa Verde video, or my chili verde video. Um, you've seen me use this technique before where essentially I broil all the ingredients that I'm gonna to use together and then blend them. Um, this recipe, by the way, is based very loosely on a recipe I did for Serious Eats a number of years ago. I will link to it in the description below. Um, in that one, the, um, the chili verde that I cooked the chicken in is based solely on uh, hatch chilies or Anaheim chilies. Um, in this version, I am doing a combination of tomatillos and chilies. Um, you can do them either any way you want, or you can do it all tomatillos if you want. Um, you know, the more the more chilies you have, the more chili flavor it has. And the more tomatillos you have, the more tomatillo flavor it has. Which makes sense, right? All right. So I'm just going to take out these ribs and seeds. You can leave them in if you want. Um, it'll make it a little bit hotter. Um, but I like to remove the seeds because I don't particularly like the texture. And if you happen to have like frozen peeled roast fire roasted hatch chilies, um, which you know are available through the mail or if you're lucky uh, at your local store, or if you're really lucky like from the side of the road in Hatch, New Mexico, um, you can use those. You don't, you don't even have to bother broiling. All right, so you can see once the chicken is ready, so be lifted up, it lifts up pretty easily. You don't have to fight it at all. Um, this is looking pretty good. That's about how le the level I want it to, this brownness right there. Yeah, that looks good. Not any browner than that. 
um, because it will continue to brown um, in the oven in a mo uh, when we get it back in there. We're just going to brown that second side. I'm going to let it. I'm going to shut this off now and just let that second side brown through the residual heat in the pan. You know, let's finish this off. Tomatillos, chilies, and onion. And just a little bit of garlic. If you don't have access to um, fresh tomatillos like this, I know they're difficult to find like in Europe, um, for example. Uh, if you don't have access to fresh tomatillos, you can use canned tomatillos. Um, they won't char as easily, uh, but they still will taste good. Um, basically, you follow the same same technique. You just take them out of the can, drain them, split them in half, and put them on the sheet tray like this. This guy had a big green germ in him. So the germ of the garlic, this green center part, generally I leave that out. I don't bother, you know, some people are super obsessive about it and will split the garlic cloves open and peel every little bit of that germ out uh, because, you know, for some certain pre preparations, which are mainly based on garlic flavor, um, that can give them a sort of bitter off flavor. Uh, but for a dish like this where um, there's so many other things going on, it doesn't really matter. You can leave it in. All right, and a little bit of oil. Rub it all over. All right, and these are gonna go right under the broiler. Highest heat broiler you got. So I'm going to let those broil until they uh, brown really well and are totally tender. It'll probably take about, you know, with this broiler I think it'll take about 10 minutes or so. Um, that might vary depending on your broiler at home, but uh, it should take about 10 minutes. So I will be back in 5 minutes. Um, I, so I'm just going to spin these guys around and see they're already starting to brown pretty nicely. We're going to rotate it just so that everything browns nice and even. In the meantime, I'm also gonna transfer this chicken back to the tray. Now, there is raw chicken juice on this tray that the chicken was coming from, but that's okay because we're going to be cooking everything again shortly. Um, and you do wanna leave all of this stuff in the pan. We'll deglaze that shortly. All right, so I'll be back in another five more minutes. Um, so I'm just finishing up picking up this cilantro here. Um, so when I pick cilantro, you know, a lot of herbs, you don't want any stems at all. Cilantro, the fine stems are totally fine to use. Um, so I generally just hold the thicker part of the stem and then drag my finger up and whatever comes with my finger um, is good to use. So whether, you know, anything that's tender enough to come off very easily uh, is going to be okay to use, especially in a dish where you're going to be pureeing things. <clears throat> All right. So I got my cilantro. My uh, vegetables are essentially done. And my oven's gonna do this annoying thing where it self locks every time you're done doing something. And I don't really know how to make it stop doing that. But as soon as it's done locking, I'm gonna set it to uh, 300 or 325 degrees or so um, for the braise. Meanwhile, let me get this uh, pan hot again. All right. So if I were doing this with all chilies and no tomatoes, um, I would probably do the chilies over a burner, um, or I might do them under the broiler if I had a lot of them and I was feeling lazy, but um, I would take the chilies, wrap them in foil, or put them in a bowl and cover it in foil and let them steam for a little bit, and then I would peel off the skins. Um, but here, I'm pureeing it all, there's a lot of tomatillos in there, there's not that many chilies, um, so the skin is actually not really gonna bother me too much in this context, so I won't even bother peeling off the skins, I'll just do this the quick and dirty way. All right, all our vegetables in. Most, most of our cilantro in. I'll leave a little bit for the uh, 
We'll wait for some garnish at the end. Okay, I'm gonna head over and give this a spin in the blender. It's good, doesn't need to be super fine. All right, now we want this pan actually sort of sizzling hot like this. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna sear this salsa, which sounds weird, you know, searing a sauce, but um, it, by preheating the pan really hot, so that the pan, so that the salsa starts sizzling as soon as it hits, you actually develop some sort of brown flavors. Um, I talk about this in my salsa verde video, which I'll also link to um, and to the recipe and the receipts. But it it does when you taste them side by side, it changes the flavor pretty significantly and deepens it. All right, we're hot there, so we're just going to dump this straight in. Ready? Give it a shake so that the bubbles come out and you get a little bit less of that sputtering. And now the last things I'm gonna add are these beans. Um, so these are uh, cannellini beans that I had, you know, you can use whatever beans you want, black beans, pinto beans. These are cannellini beans that I soaked uh, in salted water overnight and then cooked uh, just in some water with a, a bay leaf. Um, you could cook them in chicken stock if you want a little more flavor. Um, you can of course also just use canned beans um, I would uh, drain and rinse the canned beans so that your liquid's not too thick. But these ones I, I, started, I started from dry, cooking down in some water. Okay, we're gonna stir in. I'm gonna take my chicken. Now here's the trick. You wanna nestle the chicken in so that the skin is still sticking out. Let's say 325. That way, the bottom of the chicken thighs or chicken legs will cook via cook via some moist heat, so essentially braising, while the tops sticking out will continue to brown and uh, hopefully stay pretty crisp. Okay. And now all we have to do is shove it in the oven. And we'll let that cook. Um, not exactly how, sure how long it'll take, um, but it's a pretty forgiving recipe. So it could take anywhere between say 45 minutes till the chicken thighs or chicken legs are cooked through up to, you know, you can leave it going in there for probably an hour and a half, maybe even two hours uh, without worrying too much about things drying out because um, you know, chicken thighs are, chicken legs are very forgiving because they have all that connective tissue tissue in them. Um, so I will come back at some point um, and yeah, I'll see you then. I'll see you in about 45 minutes-ish, I think. Um, I actually just checked the chicken. Um, these are pretty massive legs, so they're actually not quite done. Um, you want them to be at least, at least 170, 180 or so, because um, that's when they'll be really tender. Um, they're still at 165. I also want them to brown a little bit more, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this oven back up. I'll pump the heat up to around 400, um, and I'll do it with uh, convection um, to get some extra browning. All right, so I will be back when those are finished, probably another about 10 minutes later. All right, I would actually let this go a little bit longer, but I've got like a podcast thing to record in about 10 minutes, so I'm pulling it out now. So if you let it go a little longer, of course the top gets a little darker. Um, and what I really like is these little brown bits on the actual salsa that you can then stir back in and they add flavor to it. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is just take out the chicken because the one thing I forgot to do, oh, you can hear that Christmas. Ooh. The one thing I forgot to do was season the, uh, the salsa before it went in. I should have seasoned it while it was in the blender. Um, Cause right now there's no salt in it other than what was on that chicken. Mm. All right, so I'm going to season this up with some salt. I 
Oh, that was good. I'm gonna add um have this fish sauce out from uh I was cooking some noodle soup yesterday. I'm gonna add just a little bit of fish sauce. I really like adding fish sauce to um stews and soups and stuff where they don't necessarily where you wouldn't think they belong. Um because it adds a sort of, you know, the glutamic acid and the inosinic acid add this savory umami depth to the dish that uh you don't get otherwise. Um, and it doesn't really taste, you don't have to worry about it tasting fishy. Um, fish sauce, when you add it, uh, hmm, in small quantities to like a very flavorful thing like this, it doesn't really taste fishy. Um, it's more of like, I mean, it's not quite, not quite a superficial flavor, but it's, uh, it's just fishal, you know? All right. So beans, chicken, let's give it a little, a little chop of cilantro. If you want, you could put some cheese in here also, something like a, like a cotija or even a feta cheese would work well. Um, or you could stir in like some shredded, you know, jack or queso Oaxaca into the stew itself to make it a little, <clears throat> a little thicker and cheesier. All right. Go see what we got. Doesn't that look great? Let's see how the chicken came out. Is it tender and juicy? It's certainly juicy. Whew, look at that juice. Mm. Great, all in one hmm. meal. Mm. Really good. All right, guys, gals, non-binary pals. Uh, I don't know what the dogs are today, but I will see you next time. Bye. -bye.